back up Thank here, you. Annette. Yeah. Uh, just today was awesome so far. Did every mother get a flower? Okay, just want to make sure. All right, sounds good. Today the title of the lesson is Responsible to Raise Profits. Oh. Oh. I was trying to incorporate the Mother's Day, you know, but also for us men and uh, single men and uh, single women who don't, who don't have children. Uh, so what can we learn from a godly mother in the Bible? And uh, we're going to look at three godly mothers in the Bible, and we're going to look raised prophets. And in the same way, what's the church's responsibility? To raise prophets, isn't it? But not prophets like finances, amen? But prophets like people of God, amen? Uh, just thinking about my mother and how responsible she was because I was a disaster. You know, when I was a kid, I was, uh, first of all, I was a Deep mama's boy. There's mama's boy, and then there's deep mama's boys. I was in pretty deep, let me tell you. So I was, I loved my mom. And um, I remember she would leave work, and I would just go home crying. And I would be crying all day. They dropped me off at, uh, the, they dropped me off at the daycare, and I was just the worst child. You didn't want to have me in the daycare. <laughs> And I remember them trying to put me to sleep with some, uh, you know, smooth jazz, and, and I just wouldn't go to, I would just look up at the ceiling and just wouldn't sleep, you know. And I caused my, I, I just love my mom, but I caused my mom a lot of trouble. Uh, younger, when I was still, I was still the in deep with the mamas, okay, and um, I uh, would, she would text, oh, I'm going to be home late, and I would just freak out. I would like freak out. My mom's going to die. She's, she said she would be home at 10 p.m. and I would be running out. I would be looking out the window. Mom, where are you? And I couldn't find my mom and I'd be crying and my sister would be, chill out, bro. Like, relax. She was here. She's going to be fine. And uh, she was always fine. And then she always came home on time. Praise God. Oh, well, a little bit late, but she always came home. Praise God. And uh, then I grew up a little bit, and I was not so much a mama's boy. I was uh, trouble for my mama, amen? And uh, I still love my mama, but I, was, I brought her a little bit of trouble. And I'm sure none of you guys can relate. I'm sure none of you guys got in trouble with your mama. And you guys were perfect angels in the crowd. Because this is a church, amen. <laughs> Look at Revelations 19. Ooh, nice. Come on, Johnny. I love it. Getting revved up. Come on. Come on, bro. Revelations chapter 19, verse 7. Come on. It says, Let us rejoice and be glad and give him glory, for the wedding of the Lamb has come, and his bride has made herself ready. The bride is the church, and you are the bride. I love that. In the same way, how does it say in 1 John that we're the children of God? In John chapter 8, we become children of God. How can we be the bride and the children? Okay, look at Revelation chapter 21. Okay. 22, I'm sorry. 22, verse 17. The Spirit and the bride say, Come. And let the one who hears say, Come. Let the one who is thirsty come. Amen. Thank you, Cicero. Cicero. And let the one who wishes take the free gift of the water of life. Nice. So consider that it says that the, the bride and the groom, Jesus and the Spirit, amen, Jesus yes. and the Spirit are, are God, amen. And it says they work together, the church and God works together mm. to let the Spirit and let the free gift out to everybody else. Amen. In sort of a way, the church is a mom. It's the bride. And in sort of a way, we raise up each of the members in the church collectively to become great disciples and great prophets for God. And as they are already children of God. Amen. Are, you, are there any children of God in here? And, and the church's responsibility 
is to raise prophets. Yes. Now, the church is not responsible necessarily for um, every single member of the community. The church is responsible to save as many as they can yeah. with the help of the bride and raise its people into, prop into being prophets. Now, the church isn't supposed to uh, do your taxes for you. Yeah. The church is not somewhere you go to party and just have a good time. And it's not where you meet your, your cool new best friend so you can learn chess, you know. Well, you could do all that. You could do all that at the church. The church is, the goal of the church is to give the spirit to the people. Yeah. Is to give people the free gift of eternal life. Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah. The goal of the church is to give eternal life. And it's the goal of the church to raise all its children, all of you, into mighty prophets. Yeah. And in the same way, a mother raises a child yeah. into becoming an awesome man or woman. Amen. And awesome an adult. And I think about how it's such a responsibility to raise a child. Yeah. And I think about how it's such a responsibility the church has to its members. Yeah. And... If you're in the church, amen, that you have a responsibility to each other. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's true. Because you are the bride and the children. Mm -hmm. And you're the mom and the children. Maybe you're the bride when you're giving and the children when you're taking. Mm -hmm. And in the church, we need to be both. Yes. We need to receive help from other disciples, but we also need to give help That's to other right. disciples. Yeah. You can't just be one and not the other. Yeah. If you're in the church, you are the bride and the children. Amen. Does that make sense, yeah. family? And uh, you think about raising prophets, the responsibility of raising prophets, that God doesn't want His children to just be anybody in the world, mm. but He wants them to be spiritual. Nice. He wants them to be faithful, full of love, and trusting in Him. And I'm going to get a little cheesy with you guys because it's Mother's Day. But I have, three, I have three short points for you guys. Point number one is humility. Look at Mary's humility. Okay. Mark chapter 6. And I pray that we imitate yes. all these qualities of a godly mother. Come on, Come on Johnny. We love Mary. Mark Come chapter 6. Come on. In verse 1, Jesus left there and went by his hometown, accompanied by his disciples. When the Sabbath came, he began to teach those in the synagogue, and many who heard him were amazed. Where did this man get these things, they said? What's this wisdom that's been given to him? What are these remarkable miracles he is performing? Isn't this the carpenter? Isn't this Mary's son and the brother of Joseph, James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon? Aren't his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. What the heck? Why would they take offense at somebody doing miracles? That doesn't make sense. Well, there's something about you changing someone's diaper and then them doing something maybe a little bit uh, convicting to you. Right. And uh, you think about the humility a parent needs to have. Ooh, oh my good. gosh, you have to change that diaper. Praise God that we don't have kids yet, okay? I'm, that is a humility that I'm not ready for. And uh, God knows it, amen? And hopefully I'm ready when it happens. And, um, you know, I just think about how God teaches you so much through the purity of a child. Yes, he does. And it says they were offended because they weren't humble. Mm -hmm. You know, whenever you're offended at something, it's because you're not yeah. humble. Yeah. Verse 4, Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his own hometown, among his relatives, and in his own home. He could do no miracles there except for lay his hands on a few sick people and heal them. You know, Jesus said, it's so sad that I can't do miracles in my own hometown mm. with my own family. Wow. Wow. And in the same way as a church and as a parent, you have to be able to be humble with your child. Mm. Amen. And you have to be able to learn from their purity and their love and their simplicity. Amen. Amen. That's awesome, and in the same way, the church has to learn from our children. Come on. There's so much we can learn from the younger yes. generation. Yes. And there's so much we can learn from the baby Christians. I think yes. about Fabian. Fabian confesses oh, the Fabian. most amazing, pure-hearted thoughts to me. And I thought, and, and he confessed to me the other day, and I thought, wow, 
I am the worst. <laughs> because for some reason down the line, I started thinking that this wasn't that bad. Yeah. Can you relate? Yeah. And maybe, yeah. maybe that there's people in here younger than you spiritually and physically mm -hmm. that you have the honor to live, learn from. Yeah. Yeah. This, is a, this is a great blessing of Mary that Mary was one of the... She was one of the few people in the family that became humble and learned from Jesus. Learn from Mary's humility that Mary can learn from somebody younger. This is a blessing, but this is also a challenge. Could you imagine a church that doesn't raise up young prophets because they don't because the older generation doesn't listen to them. Even when it's from the Bible. Now that is a warning to all of us. Yeah. That if we don't allow our young disciples, our baby Christians to raise up, the Diegos to raise up, by listening when he has a scripture, we will not have another generation of Christians. Because he'll view us as hypocrites and that'll stir him from the faith. What about you? Have you considered that there's things you need to learn from people who are babies in the faith? The simplicity of their faith, as Matthew 18 says, we need to be like children to enter the kingdom. Don't get too complicated, amen? amen. When somebody has a scripture for you, can you take it in humility? Can we raise up our young prophets in the church? That's our job. Are you guys with me, amen? Point number two is unconditional. I think about a, a mother's unconditional love. What a mother's willing to do for their child. There's a woman in Exodus named Yohebet. Look at Exodus chapter 1. If you don't know who Yohebet is, it's, it's Moses' mother. Did she raise a prophet or what? What did she do to raise Moses? Look at Exodus 1. We're going to start and look at some other mighty mothers. In verse 15, uh, the, the king of Egypt wants to kill all the infants under two years old, the male infants, because he's afraid of his kingdom being taken from him. Yeah, yeah. Verse 15, the king of Egypt said to the Hebrew midwives, whose name were Shifra and Pua, when you are helping the Hebrew women during childbirth on delivery stool, if you see that the baby is a boy, kill him. But if it is a girl, let her live. The midwives, however, feared God and did not do the thing the king of Egypt had told them to do. They let the boys live. Then the king of Egypt summoned the midwives and asked them, Why have you done this? Why have you let the boys live? The midwives answered Pharaoh, Hebrew women are not like Egyptian women. They're vigorous and give birth before the midwives arrive. So these, these women were shrewd. They knew, okay, they knew how to argue. Good job. So, the God, so God was kind to the midwives. And the people increased because, and became even more numerous and because the midwife feared God, wow. he gave them families of their own. I think a key to unconditional love is fearing God. Yeah. Because the easiest time to put a condition on your love is when you're thinking about men or you're in sight of other men. And you're in sight of other women. and People can see you. But when you're in the dark, when there's no accountability... When it's just you and the right thing you should do, are you going to be unconditionally loving? Yeah. And uh, only God really knows your limits. Yeah. We, think we, have, we think we know our limits and we're like, oh, no, no, that's maxing me out. I can't go beyond that. Do you know only God really knows your limits? Yeah. And so for us to be unconditional, we got to pray, God, please, what is my limit. God, please help me go past. Help me reach the limit you think I should yeah, go to. That's what that Instead of lowering our standards. Yeah. Because what? Not fearing God. Yeah. But fearing obstacles. Fearing these big problems we perceive. And fearing man. Look at Yohebet, the mother of Moses. In verse 1 it says, Now a man of the tribe of Levi married a Levite woman. She became pregnant and gave birth to a son. Exodus 6.20 says her name. When she saw that he was f a fine child, and I like to think that my mom thought the same thing of me, <laughs> she hid him for three months. But when she could hide him no longer, 
She got a papyrus basket for him and coated it with tar and pitch. She placed it, the child in it and put it among the reeds along the bank of the Nile. His sister stood at a distance to see what would happen. And I like to think that the mom sent the sister because she wanted to protect the child. Yeah. You see, she's hiding the child for three months at the risk of her own life, protecting this child. And she finally can't hide him anymore. Look at the length she's willing to go. She says, you know what? I'm co she's creative. I'm going to coat this. I'm going to make a little boat for him. Yeah. And, and then she sends the daughter. And, and look at this. Moses ends up safe in the temple palace. It says in verse 5, Pharaoh, uh, verse 5, Pharaoh's daughters went down to the Nile to bathe her. And her attendants were walking along the riverbank. She saw the basket among the reeds, sent her female slave to get it. And Moses, in time, becomes a prophet that he was meant to be. But could you see the sacrifice and the risk that it took to save Moses' life and to save all these children? What sacrifices and risk are we willing to take to protect the family in this group? And there's risk, there's problems, and there's dangers that you can only find out about someone if you get one-on-one, -on -one, if you figure out what's in their hearts. I challenge you guys, we have to be a family of unconditional love. Yeah. Drop everything for each other. Mm -hmm. Drop everything to serve each other. Drop everything to protect each other. Yeah. Drop everything to find out what sin is hurting this person. Yeah. Unconditional love. Yeah. Have no conditions. Yeah. Point number three is be a giver. Nice. Mothers are very giving. Yeah. I can think about my mom, how she worked two jobs yeah. at some points. Wow. And I know many of the, 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 the mothers and, and, uh, and uh, in this room have done the same thing. Yeah. Worked two jobs, countless hours. And I just commend that that serving God is serving your children. Yeah. Amen. I thank you, God. Thank you, all the spiritual mothers in the room. I think of Christine and I, Christine's over here. Sorry. I think of I think of Kathy, Ciel, Val. We need spiritual mothers in the family of God. Without a spiritual mother, the church will feel a lot less warm and compassionate, and it'll be a lot less sacrificial. And you know what? I think about all the years of being in the church for seven years. I've been in the church for seven years. I think of the single moms have always, almost always, stood out as one of the greatest givers. Yeah. Yeah. Because they're always one of the most grateful. Yeah. Yeah. I know this single mother in Milwaukee when I was in the church there would give more than everybody else beyond her ability. And the church leader had to say, stop giving. Yeah. You're giving too much. But she was so grateful, wanted every single mom to have what she had. She wanted the church to spread throughout the whole city, throughout the whole country. And if, if that was our heart, this church would be a much more giving church. If we could all imitate the givers in our life and the givers in the Bible. Look at 1 Samuel. I want to look at one of the biggest givers in the whole Bible. 1 Samuel chapter 1. <clears throat> First Samuel chapter 1, this woman, her name is Hannah, she can't have kids. She goes to pray about it. Verse 9, as one Christian should, right? Pray about it. When they had finished eating and drinking Shiloh, Hannah stood up. Now Eli the priest was sitting on the chair by the doorpost of the Lord's house. In her deep anguish, Hannah prayed to the Lord, weeping bitterly. She made a vow saying, The Lord Almighty, if you will only look on your servant's misery and remember me and not forget your servant, but give her a son, then I will give him to the Lord for all the days of his life. No razor will ever be used on his head. Wow, this is amazing. She wants a son. It's her. She's weeping bitterly. I mean, she's just out. She goes to the temple to pray about this, and it's her only desire. Yeah. And you know what she wants to do with her only desire? She wants to give it back to God. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. And she wants to give her son to God. Yeah. Yeah. She literally wants to raise a prophet. Yeah. And 
You know, we have so many gifts in this life and are given so many blessings. And unfortunately, sometimes it stops with us. Mm. Instead of giving it to God or passing it along and blessing others with what God has blessed you, yeah. if you become stingy, become, become too idolatrous of the thing you want, mm. which for her, she could have idolized her son. Yeah. But she didn't. Yeah. She wanted to give her son to God. Yeah. And this is a win-win because now she's going to have an awesome son and God's going to have an awesome prophet. Yes. Amen. Amen. That's awesome. And God's going to have an awesome prophet. But if she didn't have this heart, would she have been given a son? No. The answer is no. Look at verse 21. Come on, bro. <clears throat> Actually, uh, we'll start in verse 24. She ends up having the son and she fulfills her vow to Jesus, to God. It says, as after he weaned, she took the boy with her, young as he was, only a few years with him, along with a three-year-old bowl and ephah of flour and a skin of wine, and brought him to the house of the Lord in Shiloh. When the boy had been sacrificed, they brought the boy to Eli, and she said to him, Pardon me, my Lord, as surely as you live, I am the woman who stood here beside you praying to the Lord. I prayed for this child, and the Lord has granted me what I asked of him. So now I give him to the Lord for his whole life. He will be given over to the Lord. Mm. Yeah. And he, he worshiped the Lord there. Mm. She promised to give her child to God. Mm. She kept her vow. Yeah. Mm. And look, and the whole, and two chapters, two books of the Bible are named after Samuel. Wow. And Samuel's not even really in the second one. Yeah. <laughs> Do you see how God works? Yeah. Do you see how great it is to be blessed and to give up and to and to give and to give past what you're able to yeah. and to give unknowing what how when you're gonna stop and to give the thing you love most. Yeah. But to give that to God is the greater blessing. Yes. And she was rewarded even to this day, because we're reading and we're remembering her gift to God. Amen. Does a gift stop with you? Does God's gift stop with you? You know, as a family, I thank you, Cicero, for talking about special missions. We're short, and it's our family that's in foreign countries. I was baptized seven years ago here, a few years before. There was a guy that's baptized here. His name is Chi. He leads churches in China. He was arrested for his faith. Wow. And he was baptized here in Chicago. There's, there was a guy baptized shortly after me. His name is Isaiah. And he's about, this year he's go, we're sending him financially. He's moving with his girlfriend, not even married yet. And they're planting a church in Amman, Jordan. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm Middle Eastern and that moves me personally. Yeah. Yeah. I love God's kingdom. We're in God's family. I'm willing to sacrifice whatever I have to sacrifice for my brothers and sisters around the world, but also to save the world. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's the heart of Hannah. Yeah. And that's the heart of a giver. Yeah. Me and Deb, we personally pledged, even though we already hit our special missions goal, we personally pledged another thousand, looking at that we have to raise another 26,000, it looks like. Yeah. But we personally are going to help that goal because we pledged another thousand. And we may pledge more. Amen. And we're going to run fundraisers every day this next week nice. so that we can hit our goal. Yeah. And, and we, we invite all of you guys to come down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To come and join us and raise this money so that we can take care of our family so we can have the humility. Yes. Come we on. can have the unconditional love. Yeah. And we can have the giving that's such a sacrifice. Amen. But that's going to result in so many more blessings. Yes. Yeah. Come on. That is the heart of a mother. Is that your heart today? Yes. That is the heart of a spiritual mother. That's the heart of the church. And that's the heart of God. Yeah. Humility is the H. Unconditional is the U. And G is giving. And God wants to give you a big hug. Aww. Just like how your mother wants to give you a big hug. And the church wants to wrap its arms around the world. Amen. And raise up prophets. We love you guys. I hope you guys are with us this next two weeks. To God be the glory.